How's it going everyone and welcome back to another exciting video. Today I'll be showing you how to color grade iPhone footage using InShot so that you can get the most out of your videos. If you're not familiar with InShot, it's available for iOS and Android users that you can download and use for free. Keep in mind that there will be a watermark, but you can easily remove that every time you export the video. I personally use the full version of InShot because I use it a lot for my social media. And with the full version, of InShot, I can use all of its filters and transitions. Now, the great thing about using a smartphone for creating content is that you can be wherever you want and you can really film, edit, and publish everything uh, using just your smartphone. Now I have three clips available that I'm gonna color grade. There is a download link to all three clips so that you can follow along while I do this tutorial for you guys. So beautiful out here. This lake is called the Turlersee and it's close to where I live. The weather is great, so I thought, why not do this tutorial outside? So enough of the talking, let's get into the color grading process. So I'm gonna open InShot, video, and we're gonna color grade the first clip. So this clip was shot on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Uh, I have my girlfriend walking uh, this path, and then in the end, she smells a flower. So to color grade your clip, Let's head over to filter and then select adjust. Now InShot's color grading tool are pretty advanced. Most of them uh, can't be seen in any other mobile editing app. And that's what I like about InShot. So the first one would be lightness. This controls the overall brightness of the image. So when pulling it to the right side, I increase the brightness and when pulling it to the left side, I decrease the brightness. And what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna pull it to the left, decreasing the brightness to make the image pop out more. As you can see, it also increases the saturation as I remove uh, some of the highlights. Next is contrast. This controls the highlights and shadows. So when I uh, pull it to the right side, I actually add more contrast. And if I pull it to the left side, I add less contrast and flattens the image more. So what I wanna do is pull it to the right just a little bit around 10 to add more contrast. Next is warmth. So this was shot on a sunny day and I also want this clip to feel more happy. That's why I'm gonna pull it a little bit more to the right to make this clip a bit warmer around 10. Next is tint. This is where you can add or remove green and magenta in your video. So usually if you have a little bit of greenish color cast or magenta color cast uh, in your video, you can remove that. If you move the slider to the left, you add more green. And if you move the slider to the right, you add more magenta. And I feel that this clip has a bit too much greenish tone in it. So I'm gonna slide it more to the to the right to remove some of the greenish tint. So around eight should look nice. Next is saturation. So you can add more color to it by sliding it to the right or remove the color or the saturation by sliding it to the left. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more color to it around three. So next we're gonna look at curves. So the left part of the curves controls the shadow area and the right side of the curve controls the highlight. So if I adjust this point here, it affects the highlights. And if I control the bottom part, which is the shadow, it, this controls the shadow area. And what I like to do is increase just a little bit of the shadow to give it more of a vintage feel and that already looks great. Next we have HSL, and with HSL you can basically control either the hue, saturation, or luminance individually. So in this case, I wanna affect just the green part in the image. Actually gonna pull this slider downwards to make the green look more yellowish. And I can actually also affect the hue of the blue, making it look a little bit more teal. Move this part over here, and then I'm gonna drag it down to make it look a bit more teal, because I like that orange and teal look. And I can also control the saturation of each individual color. 
So if I feel like the grass is too saturated, I can actually pull down on the green slider to remove some of the saturation. But I actually like it that way, so I'm gonna keep it. So next is luminance, and this controls the brightness of each individual uh, color. So I can actually pull down on the yellow to darken it more. Yeah, that for me looks great. I can also change a bit of the skin tone if I want to, uh, making it darker or uh, lighter, but I actually like it how it is. And so I'm gonna hit the check mark and let's move on to fade. So by increasing it, I add more fade to the image, but I usually leave that off. So next we have highlights. This controls the highlights. It can add more to the highlights or remove it. Usually I reduce a little bit of the highlights, especially if it was bright outside uh, to around minus seven. And the shadows, I lift a bit just to add more details in the shadow area. So next we have colors, but I don't usually use that. Let's move on to hue. We can change the overall hue of the image, but I leave that how it is. Next is vignette. I absolutely love to add some vignette to my video. It allows the viewer to focus their attention more towards the subject. So as you can see, as I increase it, it creates these uh, dark areas uh, at the corner of the image, but I'm gonna keep it around 50. Next is sharpen. Especially when filming with the iPhone, I like to add a little bit of sharpening to it around 10. Next is grain. I do like to add a little bit of that grainy look to my video. Not too much, but just a little bit, especially after grading my video to make it look even. And if you want, you can also use film grain, which is just a different grain, but I'm gonna leave that off for now. And I'm gonna hit the check mark. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add a filter. I'm gonna head over to filter and I'm just gonna choose, my favorite one is the Cinema One. And this is way too strong. So I'm gonna reduce this filter to around five. And here's the before and after before, after. Huge difference, right? So what I'm gonna do next is apply this look to all of the other clips in the timeline. And to do that, I'm gonna hit the double check mark and select apply to all because all the other shots were shot at the same location at the same time of day. And here's the final result. So the second clip we're gonna color grade is actually a hyperlapse I did with the iPhone 12 Pro Max using the ultra wide angle lens. And this is how it looks like. So again, I'm gonna select the clip and then hit filter and select adjust. And again, the lightness, I'm gonna reduce to around 30. Contrast, I'm gonna increase the contrast to make it pop more. Warmth, I'm gonna make it look warmer. Tint, I'm gonna move it towards the right just to remove a little bit of that greenish tint. Saturation, also gonna increase to around seven. Curves, I'm gonna lift the shadows a bit just to make it look a little bit more filmish. Filmish, can you say that, filmish? And I'm gonna hit the check mark. And HSL, I wanna make the skies look more teal. So I'm gonna select the blue and pull it towards teal, like so. And the green, I'm also gonna pull towards yellow. This one doesn't change, so I'm gonna select maybe yellow. Yes, it affects the yellow, so I'm gonna pull that down Saturation um, looks good. I think I'm gonna decrease the saturation in the sky. So I'm gonna select the blue and just reduce it a bit. What else do we have? Luminance. I think luminance, I'm gonna leave it how it is. Gonna hit the check mark. Let's move on to um, fade is, I don't need that. Highlights. 
So in the highlights, I'm actually gonna decrease the highlights a bit. Now in the shadows area, I'm gonna move the slider to the right to show more details in the shadow areas. Vignette, slide it over to the right to increase a little bit of the vignette to around 50. Add a little bit of sharpening, not too much, maybe around 10. Add a bit of grain. All right. I'm also gonna add a filter to it. So I'm gonna use the Cinema One. And you can actually purchase these filters individually, cost like $1 or something. And I'm gonna reduce this to around five. Let's see the before and after. Boom, looks really nice. Play it back. Awesome. So the last clip we're gonna grade is this uh, Swiss flag. We're gonna have it over to filter and then select adjust. And if I want, I can actually play the clip back and edit at the same time. So that's also pretty awesome. So I'm gonna reduce the highlights just a little bit to around 10, add some contrast to make the image pop more. I'm gonna add some warmth, a lot of warmth. The tint slider, I'm gonna move to the right to remove some of the greenish tone. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation. That looks really nice. I'm gonna lift the shadows a bit, like so. Then in the HSL curve, so in the hue section, I'm gonna change the sky from blue to teal. And I actually wanna remove some of the magenta in the mountains, so I'm gonna reduce that. And if you don't know how the hue affects the image, you can just select the color and just um, drag it up and down to see how it will look. All right, I think this looks great. Saturation looks good to me. Luminance looks good to me, so I'm gonna hit the check mark. Next is highlights. What I wanna do is actually increase a little bit of the highlights to make the clouds pop more. And the shadow area, I'm actually gonna reduce just to make the mountains darker a bit. Add a vignette to the image. Add a little bit of sharpening to around six. Add a little bit of grain. And hit the check mark. Gonna add a filter to it. Actually gonna select film one. See how that looks? Nah, I don't like that. I'm gonna leave it at original. So this is the before and after. Boom, boom. Huge difference. I'm gonna play it back. Looks really nice. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how I color grade my iPhone footage using InShot. Make sure to apply these strategies for your own so that you can get the most out of your videos. So make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and if you're new on my channel, make sure to subscribe so that I can keep creating awesome tutorials for you guys. By the way, if you're not a member of a smartphone filmmaking group, I have one on Facebook that you can join so that you never have to be alone again. Also make sure to download my free smartphone filmmaking guide that will help you get started with making videos on your smartphone. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, stay mobile, and I will see you in the next video.